are really, really poor, so we're just gonna give it a shot. Essentially, what we're gonna do first. What's going on, guys? Tweaking Tipper Outdoors, and today we're gonna go through a step by step basis on how to tie a slightly weighted uh, craw imitation using uh, a streamer hook size 2 by Unqua. Um, this came in Lucky Tackle Box, uh, and it's a 1x strong 3xL shank. So, first off, we're going to start off by using some, it's a little light thread, but it's a 72 uh, denier 8 dot, and this is in brown. We're going to start, I like to give about maybe a full centimeter back from where the eye of the hook starts. We're going to give a nice base coat here. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect because the entirety of the hook is going to get covered and I like to go as far back basically until the start of the barb which I like to take off anyway but um, to get that back in focus here there we go and just give it a nice couple passes this is pretty thin thread and so it's unwaxed what I'm using today so um, Wax probably would be better, but I wanted to get a nice video out for you, and one of the easiest ways to do that is to work with what I have. Now, because this thread is pretty thin, I'm going to be doing a couple different moments where I'm just going to throw some whip finishes in. Um, that helps us out uh, because it helps us in case the thread breaks, uh, we have a place to work back again from. So, all right, so we've got our our, sl our base started here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the end. Now there's plenty of ways to do this, but one thing I like to do is I like to start off with my antennae. Um, so we're going to be using some crazy legs. It's a fairly large size because we want these to be noticed. I'm just going to snip one off here. And that way we can... Uh, one leg will be used to create two antennae. So basically I kind of fold mine over and this is where I start my some loose wraps right on top of the hook. And I do this first without um, too much underneath it because I like the way it splays when you go directly to the hook. So for example, I like they kind of stick out like that. I'm just going to lock this down. I like mine nice and tight here. Okay. Then what we're going to do is I like to take copper wire and we're going to tie down some copper wire right in the middle here. Some loose wraps. Draw it in. Tie it down. Again, I'm going to throw some whip finishes in so that I can save my work. That's an optional step. You don't necessarily need to do that. Okay. Then, we're going to take some... I like Superfly. Uh, this one is a little smaller. This is it's a Scud back. Uh, this one's a size midge, but you can go a little bigger. And I'm going to cut, you know, a length that would be appropriate for this fly. And I'm just going to tie this in right flush to the top. Of the craw. All right. 
make sure these are nice and splayed still. There we go. And the reason we do that first is because, let's get this back in focus here. Because I want to make sure that when we add the next bit of feather here, it, uh, it keeps this part when we pull it over will splay out. So let's see if we can get this back in focus here. There we go. So now we're going to grab two. Now these are saddle hackle, but these are kind of craft store saddle hackle. Um, and the reason I like to use these is because they still have some of the marabou at the ends here, but it's a uh, they make good claws on crayfish and crawdads. Ooh, there's a couple good ones. You want them to kind of match a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but they kind of, I like to use matching and opposite. Let's see, we have a couple good ones here. So we're gonna go with these two. So what I'm gonna do is I like to add a little bit of dub and so I'm going to go with some dubbing that typically for these patterns I like to go with kind of like a reddish dubbing and I'm going to, this isn't the best technique but for this you know pattern you're kind of just looking to add some bulk and so I like to just roll it on because we're going to use counter wraps anyway slide it up and just kind of gives us a body. So we're just going to add a little bit there. Okay, really kind of do that there. Now we're going to take our craw arms and we're going to kind of measure them out to where they're similar. I like to leave the marabou because then when it gets wet it stays and adds some arm to the to the fly. Now we're going to tie this in. along the shank for a couple of good turns kind of keeping it perpendicular there we go I'm going to snip the excess here that's the stem of the, the vein if you will and I'm just going to run this down the body there we go that helps add body to the fly too and then opposite of that we're going to go and attach our second Keep that in focus there a second. There we go. And I want them to be similar lengths. There we go. Just going to snip the in here again to save my work. Okay. So this is what we have so far. Okay. Two there. Now I sometimes add marabou also to the arms of the fly, like like appropriately colored marabou. But today, we're gonna skip that process because this is actually a fairly small craw. So now what we're gonna do is I like to, at this stage, add some wire. Now, you don't have to, but I'm gonna add some, some wire here, just a little bit. And it doesn't matter because we're gonna dub over this that we've waited this long to do this. So we're going to add the wire in here and give some strength to that. And we're going to wrap all the way forward here. There we go. And we're just going to 
wrap our body, giving it some weight. Also giving it some, some abdomen up front. Giving us a nice taper. Doesn't have to be pretty. We just want a little bit of a body here. And I know this won't be a weedless craw, but this is a, one that I dead drift in some silt bottom stuff. And we just kind of twist here. There we go. And we're just going to wrap back over top. And just add some security. Now, now that we're back up front here, we're going to do the same process with some dubbing we did before. Um, but, uh, and again, not you don't need to worry too much about, you know, doing a dubbing loop or waxing because we're trying to add bulk. Okay, so we want to make sure that the fly looks meaty. So you're just trying to cover up essentially. I'm gonna get flack for this, but I'll show you that we're gonna we're gonna counter wrap some the the copper wire anyway. We're gonna counter counter wrap the copper wire. So, no need really to worry too, too much. Now this can be done with black, this can be done with a darker brown or tan, whatever it is you want. Essentially, what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to use a little less sparser and sparser bits as we get closer towards the end here because I want to taper the body of this crawfish. And I'm going to, I'm going to stop with enough ample room up here to allow the, um, the head for when I tie my tail on. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap back against the body, heading this way. That helps secure it a little bit, but also what's going to do is it's going to allow me to use a little darker bit of dubbing. I'm going to kind of roll it and, and pull it and roll it. These are going to act kind of as our legs. So I'm going to not dub this. I'm going to throw it underneath. I'm going to tie it in as legs. Make sure it's situated straight down. Again, do a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm going to, ready, I'm going to roll and I'm going to put it underneath. Tie it in straight down. And again, I'm going to try and do this less and less to taper forward. All right, now I'm gonna give myself a little whip finish here to save my work. Now, what I'm gonna do is the next step is I'm going to take my one more crazy leg. And I'm going to tie it in facing forward. Let's 
snip the excess. And I'm going to take it, fold it backwards to create like a little half heart shape. You want to size it appropriate kind of to your fly. Size it appropriately rather. Now, some people like to snip it here. I'll snip it just for ease. And then I take the other, this part you snipped off, and I tie it back in on the other side. And then again, I create a little loop, same size as the other one, and try and tie it in. See what we're trying to do? You want it to try and stay flush on top, but it's not as big a deal as you, as many people will make it out to be. Sometimes it's nice that if the profile is going this way, they get a bigger profile um, with a little bit of a turnt side part of the fly, and so this sometimes helps. Nice and set there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a little bit more dub back to that kind of reddish orangish dub to cover up our tail bits there. And it also kind of helps create a tail. Okay, so now, next step is we take our scud back. I like to make sure that it splays out our our arms here, our craw, and then want to make sure that I like to take it to about maybe half a centimeter before the tail because that gives some bulk to the tail. And we're going to wrap up, make sure that it's straight on top, and wrap up. Snip this excess right at the, as close as we can, and just because I'm anal retentive, I'm going to throw a whip finish in there to make sure that it stays. Now, take my copper wire. I'm going to start underneath. And I'm going to kind of weave it through the under dub. And I'm going to create segments, constantly pulling down on the dubbing. And I'm going to wind it back up to where we've met our, it's almost like the caudal peduncle of the crawfish, which is where the tail on a fish meets the meets the slim part of the body. Okay, so we're going to snip this close. Okay. Give some good wraps here. Throw a whip finish in there. I 
that through a nice four turn. Now the last step, we're going to snip our thread. Sorry for the focus there, I got in the zone. Is we're going to take some clear coat or some Stanley Hansen or some UV epoxy. We're going to go from the top of the where the what do you call it? Where the scud back was. And this is what our crawl looks like. You can work with a brush on your underdub. If you want to pull it out, you know, you can pull it out. If you want to make it a little uh, you know, tougher, you can add more and then you can snip it if you need to with scissors. But this is my go-to kind of somewhat weighted um, fly for crawfish. Now you could add barbell eyes on the bottom side or the top side here and cover it with dubbing and it will flow, it will ride like this and you could tie in your claws a little differently. Um, some guys like to use um, you know extra marabou or just paint marabou on here uh, instead which is a little tougher than these than these hackles. But for pretty easy tie, very few skills required, very few materials required, this right here is a killer dead drift or shallow water crawl pattern for bass, trout, you name it, it'll catch it. Hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Check out the channel. Check out the other videos in the playlist. Check out LuckyTackleBox.com. And until next time, guys, catch you guys on the flip side. Tight lines, and we're out.